So if you've ever seen a glimpse of my channel at any point in the past, then you're probably well aware that I showcase a lot of Android applications. But for the past six months or so, I've actually been working in partnership with a developer to create my own application. And it's given me a real appreciation for all of the coding and work that goes on behind the scenes to create these incredible apps that I'm showcasing. And so that led me down the rabbit hole of open source applications. If you've never heard of the term open source before, it essentially means a developer of any given application has made all of the coding and files related to their app available to the public for viewing and even for modification and distribution. So this is great if you're a learning developer because you can check out all of the coding for any open source app that you might like and even use that for your own application development or it also just provides a level of trust when using one of these open source apps because you know there aren't any trackers or malicious bits of code hidden within the app. More than that, open source applications are free and they never include any ads whatsoever. And so with all of that being said, I thought it'd be fun to compile a list of my favorite open source applications here in 2021. I've got 15 apps to showcase that fit the bill of being both free and open source. So buckle up and let's get straight in. So starting things off, we have Snapdrop, and this is an incredible application that makes sharing files between any device a much more seamless process. You just open the app on your phone and then in your browser of choice, and any devices in the near vicinity will pop up pretty much immediately. Then on either device, you select a file for transfer, and within seconds, it'll appear on the other device. The best part is that you don't need any sort of account. There's no need for third-party browser extensions, and I genuinely use this app several times a week. And then there's NewPipe. This app is a lightweight version of YouTube that unlocks a heap of otherwise restricted features. The design is fairly simple, definitely nothing to write home about, but where it might be lacking in design, it certainly makes up for in terms of features. For example, you get background playing, picture in picture mode, downloading for offline playback, plus a bunch more. And again, just a reminder, this app is completely free with no ads whatsoever. APK Updater is a tool designed to simplify the process of finding updates for the various apps installed on your phone. And what makes it really great is that it's not just limited to apps from the Google Play Store as well. Now, while some applications can be updated directly within the app, for everything else, you'll simply be redirected to a browser where you can basically sideload the update. But if you're someone with a bunch of apps installed on your phone that are not from the Google Play Store, well, this app is a must have. All right, from there we have HeyNote, and this is an open source application that takes the basic concept of writing notes and makes it just that little bit unique. How? Well, it actually lets you write notes that then stick to your phone's wallpaper. It's a pretty cool concept that I can see being super helpful for those who absolutely need to make sure they don't forget something. If you're a Reddit user, then a great open source client you might wanna check out is Infinity for Reddit. Aside from general usability, I think it's the design of the app that makes it one of the best Reddit clients available. It looks and feels right at home here in 2021. And what's great is that there are also a bunch of theming customizations to take advantage of within the app settings. Now, Shortcut Maker is a customization based application that has been mentioned quite a number of times here on the channel. But when I discovered that it was also open source, I was honestly blown away. The app itself allows you to create custom-made shortcut widgets that you can then place on your launcher's home screen. And this is perfect for if you use a launcher that doesn't support third-party icon packs. Depending on the phone I'm using, this app is often one of the first to be downloaded. And the fact that it's open source is incredible. All right, here's a quick one for anyone who doesn't use Spotify Premium, Mutify. This is a super simple application that will detect whenever Spotify plays an ad, and once it does, it'll immediately turn your phone's volume down to zero. The ads on Spotify are often infamous for being super loud and in your face, so Mutify is a pretty great solution. Then we have Shazuku, an application designed to make the whole process of granting apps ADB permissions much, much easier. Now, obviously, you'll need to grant ADB permissions to Shizuku first, but once you do, any supported app can then have its own ADB permissions granted via Shizuku. Really, really handy if you're someone using a lot of apps that require ADB permissions. All right, halfway through the list is Watermatic, and this is an auto-reply application for both WhatsApp and Facebook Messenger. With the app set up, anytime you receive a WhatsApp or Messenger notification, the app will reply instantly with the auto-reply text you've set up. There's a few settings you can tweak as well, but it's definitely a pretty handy application. 
Now, there's certainly a lot of note-taking applications available on the Google Play Store, but one of the best open source options is Pure Writer. As far as note-taking applications go, Pure Writer is definitely one of the best in terms of design and usability. It's got fluid animations that follow your cursor as you type, a bunch of these really useful shortcuts for formatting notes, and honestly, it's just a really solid and elegantly designed note-taking application. Blockada 5 is a pretty popular ad blocker and privacy application, but perhaps the best part about it is that it's open source. The app does need to create a VPN to work correctly, but once it's set up, it works pretty well and blocks most of the intrusive ads you'll otherwise come across. This type of VPN ad blocking will never be perfect, so you'll still see some ads here and there, but I'd say it's still one of the best options in terms of ad blocking. If you're someone who really enjoys using Instagram, but you question its privacy policies, well, Barinsta is a pretty great third-party client that you might just wanna check out. Now, firstly, if you like, you don't actually need to have an account to use and browse public profiles and hashtags using Barinsta, but if you do log in, there are some additional features that are pretty cool. For example, you can pause and even download stories. You can customize the theme and layout of the app. Plus, there's a heap more as well. And what's great is that it's not a mod of Instagram, so there's no risk of having your account banned by using it. All right, Skip Track is an application I featured quite some time ago on the channel, but essentially it allows you to remap a long press of your phone's volume button to control media playback, even when your phone screen is off. It's a pretty handy feature that still works just as flawlessly here in 2021. Second to last is Autodark, and as the name suggests, this is an app that allows you to take your phone's system theming to another level altogether. Now, whilst most phones do now allow scheduling of the system-wide dark theme, what makes Autodark unique is that you can also set it up so that it changes your phone's wallpaper whenever the theme changes. Super useful. And finally, we have TapTap, a really cool application that essentially creates a new custom button on your phone. This is actually an accessibility feature that can be found on iPhones where you essentially double tap the back of the phone to activate some sort of shortcut. But given TapTap is a third party workaround, it's surprising just how well it works. What's even more impressive is the amount of actions and shortcuts you can choose from. So definitely a fun application to have installed on your phone. But there you have it. Those are 15 of the very best free and open source applications here in 2021. If you have any other recommendations for free and open source apps that were not featured in this video, then definitely let us all know down in the comments below. And who knows, maybe I'll put together a second episode in the future. If you enjoyed this video, then a sub would be greatly appreciated. And don't forget to follow me over on Instagram and Twitter for behind the scenes content and access to promo codes for paid apps that I release each month. Aside from that, hopefully you enjoyed the video. Thank you all very much for watching and I will catch you later.